So just a reminder again, um, I made this video because I couldn't find anyone who, who posted a video doing this on, uh, on, on YouTube. I'm not a mechanical engineer, not an electrical engineer, but I thought if you watch me fumble through this, you might, uh, you might learn something too. I, I did take some time and loosen some of the, the bolts already just to, uh, just to actually save some, just to save you some time watching me fumbling through this. So I have, Loosened the uh, the bolts on the side. Um, I also loosened the the bolts on this this gantry piece. I put tape here <coughs> just to mark where it is. <coughs> Excuse me, mark where it is, just so I can put it back if uh, if it moves at all. I've loosened it. Um, I also put a bit of tape across the bottom here, just to sort of hold it in place. I'm hoping I can just sort of tip it sideways and um, and not have to take all these out because I know they're a bit of a pain to put back in again. Um, so. I will, should have done this in the first place, but let me just move this down over here. And take all of these out. And I'm taking them out on the other side as well, just on the, uh, just on the two rods. My theory being that if I can just pop the rods out, and I have loosened this enough that I can take the, the threaded rod out. I'm hoping I can, and if I just slide this over, um, and just going to undo the grub screws on the coupling here. And if I can pop this out, I think I can actually then just get the That's just the, the grub screw out. There we go. Okay, so I now have this piece completely out. So my theory is I can put the new piece together and get it onto this, uh, we'll be good. Okay, so these are the pieces that, that came in the kit. First thing to check is that this is actually the right size. And it is, that's great. So I think what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll go offline and I will just mount, um, you can see these, these little things are already in there. So it's just gonna be a matter of me mounting these four pieces and then this piece in the middle. Um, so I'll do that and then I'll come back um, and we will see about just slotting this in, in there. So actually I thought I could do one, <laughs> show you me doing one, just so you can see. So these are the longer screws that, uh, bolts, sorry, that came in. Um, I will do the top one first. So, um, actually I'll put a little bit of, uh, Loctite on, on this. Because this is going to get a little bit of vibration. So I'll just put a little Loctite blue. And okay, yep, that's nice and easy. So, yep, I'm just going to do that on each one of them. It seems pretty straightforward. Uh, if I am doing something incorrect, let me know in the comments or let everybody else know in the comments because it'll be too late for me. But uh, again, just uh, just doing what I how I think this is going to go. So I will do this um, on all all four of these and this piece. I'll work out which way that goes based on on the old one, and then I'll come back. Okay, so got these in and they're they're still loose for now. And um, there was two shorter bolts. They they went for the kickback piece. Um, actually, very very easy. They went in just just, just super easy, and they all have the uh, Loctite blue on them. Um, so then I'm, I'm going to bring, this is the existing piece, which I've, I've still got threaded here just just so I can get sort of a close approximation of, of where they're going to go. Um, and let me put the, actually I'll just, I'm going to put these two bars in first. I think... That was a good idea and it's just not going to work. So I actually, I've given up. Um, oh, so um, the, these pieces don't seem to be, they seem to be um, pretty symmetrical. So I don't think it mattered which way around they went. I, I'm assuming, I mean, this, this is just to let it slide this way. Um, for the kickback, 
piece. I put it with the um, the cutout piece facing this way because I am assuming that it's going to go together like this with these pieces facing to the right. And I think that only because um, on the uh, piece that came with it, that's sort of the the, the way that it was it was fit, fitted. So I'm going to assume that. So um, I will thread this in. Again, <clears throat> if you're watching this and and cringing, um, then please throw a comment in. And I'm I'm pretty sure it's gonna it's it's going into the bottom one because it should be aligned with these. But there's a there's a top one as well which or you know, one closer to, to where you are on the screen, which I assume is for different devices where perhaps there's an offset. Um, so, what will it? I am going to take this off here because I think this will be a lot easier to do. this. So again, what I'm attempting to do is, sorry, so what I'm attempting to do is to put these two pieces together like this. Okay, so here's an example of uh, something you're going to learn rather than just messing around doing what I was just doing, uh, which is you need to use these two little bolts and connect the the sort of flange on this copper piece onto the plate and I guess that's because there's two different offsets you can have with this but um, this makes sense now because it was just going to turn on its own so um, bear with me but and, and again maybe this will be completely obvious to you but I uh, well it will be now because you see me do it so um, So, I have to get an arm wrench. So what I'm doing is I am fixing, as I say, this, this flange to the lower piece. Uh, for This is a, a generic 3018 bought off eBay, made in China unit. So your mileage may vary, um, but I am, sorry, out of screen. Okay, this is going to work a lot better. Otherwise it would have just been spinning around and round. No. Okay, yeah, and I put, uh, if you didn't see me, I put a bit of Loctite blue on this as well, although these don't feel like they're gonna come out in a hurry. I feel like they're almost tapping themselves through there. Okay, so this, this makes a lot more sense now and um, I'm going to have it facing this way. I don't know if it matters. Does it matter? Yeah, I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it facing this way because that's effectively the way it was in the original. Um, I can't imagine why it would matter, but we'll we'll find out. So um, line that up, thread that through. That feels much better. Okay. So just to show you what that looks like, so it's it's bolted on that side and then this side, it has the anti-kickback piece. So I'll just feed that through and then put these back again and get this back onto the back of the uh, holder. And this is exactly why I was looking for something on uh, on YouTube was just to see see someone else do this. Okay, so um, there we go. We might as well put that sort of a bit more centered. Just might be a little bit easier. We'll see. So I think that is 
that's it sort of replicated. So um, I will set up differently and you can watch me put this back together into the, uh, into the actual CNC. Okay, so this is the uh, CNC obviously, and I'm just gonna put this in sort of loose and, and then close everything up a little bit and then, and then I'll make the adjustments. My thought is that I want th this as, as high up as possible to give me the poss best possible clearance. Um, so I will just pop these back together and putting in the threaded piece first because that seemed to be the hardest piece to, to get out. And there we go. And then line up the, the left hand side. And just see if I can get a couple of those screws in, bolts in, sorry, not screws. And there we go, okay. I think if I can just get the bottom one in. Yeah, apologies if you're a mechanical engineer and you're sobbing. I, uh, sorry. Okay, so I'm just getting all of these back in loosely. And Okay, I will give you a reprieve while I just tighten these to be finger tight, and then we'll come back and look at the alignment. Okay, so all I've done is is tighten all the ones that were loose uh, to be effectively finger tight, and I did put the grub screw back in here. I didn't put Loctite back on all of these. They already had Loctite on them. Um, if that was a mistake, let me know. I can always, I can always fix that later on. I'll keep an eye on them. Um, so, okay. Um, oops. Okay, so that feels like that is moving quite, actually, very nicely, actually, that's, uh, that feels good. Um, so now I need to work out <laughs> how to tighten the, uh, the Allen keys at the back when it's here. And this could be a little bit of a challenge. I suspect that what I'm going to have to do don't know how else I could have done this, is I might have to take this, this piece out and um, so that I can get in behind. Let me turn this around and show you what my issue is, sorry. Um, so I put these in loose because I wanted to be able to, to, to move this around and, and get it in the right place. And just the top ones, just these two, actually I cannot get to, I don't think, Oh, actually, you know what, I can. Actually, it's going to be fine. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a T-square and I'm just going to make sure this is as sort of as square as I can make it because you can see there's quite a bit of play in it. Just make sure it's square to the base. Not sure if that makes any difference, but uh, it's not going to do any harm. And then I'm going to tighten these and and the, um, the, actually, the, the kickback as well. So let me just yeah, so you're not gonna to to see me making the adjustment, but it actually was a little bit out. So let me just tighten. So I'm I'm also just making sure that it's as high up as it will go, and it it is, because I want all the clearance I can get, which is the whole point of doing this. Um Hmm. Uh, okay. I uh, I need a larger square because that's not touching the, the same place. Um, okay. You know what they say? There's no kill like overkill. So here we go. Okay, 
that's uh, that's much better so just basically making sure that as best i can it is square to the base and actually it does turn out that i can get access to um, all eight of these actually all ten of these um so let me just tighten them all a little bit and then i will wrench them these do have fresh loctite on them let me let go of that yep that is uh, that is as square as it needs to be for the kind of junk i make um so i'll just tighten these and then i'm just going to make sure again that it runs smoothly um before i tighten them down any more than that okay so it's, it's running okay but the the, the drive, the threaded bar is in the wrong place. It actually had come out of the uh, of the connector. Um, let me just turn this this way a little bit, just so you can see. This has come out of the connector here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just tighten that in a little bit, but I, I will come back and align that properly. Otherwise, you get a lot of noise. Ask me how I know. Okay, so I just want to make sure that it's running smoothly still. Yep, actually feels uh, feels very good. Um, and interestingly, when I do this, it's generating electricity back into the board, and the board's lighting up. Um, okay, this feels good. So um, I will. Tighten the kickback drive thingy. You can fast forward over this. Um, okay. All right, I, I'm going to tighten these and I will come back. Okay, so. Those are all tightened up. Seems to be running quite smoothly. So I'm just gonna take it over to the very right hand side. And then I'm going to loosen these grub screws. Because this bar doesn't have a flat piece in it. Um, so what I like to do is loosen them both off. And then just tighten them a bit at a time and try and get that centralized. But the first time I, when I originally put this together, I, I didn't do this and I think it was just slightly offset and it just made a lot of noise. Um, I'll probably adjust it again later. Okay. Good. So what is left to do is I need to now tighten everything down properly because these are all still finger tight. Um, then I am going to put on the clamp and then uh, drop the spindle in. So I will do that um, and once again, come back to you. Okay, everything's tightened down, tightened up, whichever way tightening goes. I guess it depends if you're in the Northern Hemisphere or Southern Hemisphere. So um, we will Drop this puppy in here, and that doesn't feel like it's going to fit. I may need to do some, uh... <laughs> mm, okay. All right, we're doing so well, and I think, no, well, we'll try tightening it down, but I do not think this is going to work. Um... Yeah, okay, let me just, um, let me see how much I can get this to close.
So this, uh, this doesn't seem to want to sort of clamp closed. If, if the spin, if this was the right size for the spindle, which I thought it was actually, and maybe they sent me the wrong one, although it seems to be out by just a tiny amount. Um, I'm just going to check. No reason. No. Okay. Oh. Okay. So I think I know what's happening is, um, is the, so the, the clamp isn't closing. And it's a little bit of a design flaw here. That's a pretty easy fix, I think. But the, these bolts go into this copper colored piece, but they're bottoming out. So what, what's happening is it's hitting this back piece. So this is going in, but I, I can't screw this in any further because it's hitting this piece. What I might be able to do is just move this over to the right because it won't care, will it? No, because when I center on the X and Y, it doesn't really have any concept of space. So I am going to just see if, I, if there's an easy fix, which is for me to shift this whole piece over so that the bolts on the right are going all the way through the, the, um, the back plate. I'm using technical terms here, I don't know what they mean, and I don't. So let me see whether or not there are holes in the right place. If not, I will just be shortening these bolts with a sophisticated piece of equipment like a saw. Yes, there is. So I, I was using these four holes here and what, what thing, what's happening is this is going through and it's bottoming out. So I am going to just move over. No, I'm not. Okay, so no, so I, I will be back when I have cut probably just a couple of mil off the bottom of two of these bolts. Oh, I'm gonna check first to make sure that two of the bolts aren't shorter and that I'm there. They're not, they're all the same length. But, so I'm gonna cut a couple of mil off the end of these, two of these bolts, so that it will close the clamp, which I'm hoping will be enough to hold the spindle in place. This might make more sense when you see me doing it. I will be back. Okay, so I, I cut a couple of mil off the, the two bolts on the right-hand side so that they can go in all the way. And we will see if it will clamp down now. Put that that way just because and I'm gonna be okay so I'm actually lining the collet with the bottom of the of this which I think is the maximum clearance I can get um, oh and it is clamping I don't know if it's clamping enough but okay <clears throat> Hmm. Okay, so, wow, that, I thought I had the wrong piece there, but no, nope, just um, a little bit of a design flaw there. So that's nicely clamped in there, and the bottom of the collet is is, is level with, with the bottom of, of this, which is the clearance I'm getting. And I'm just going to do a quick comparison to see if I'm actually getting more clearance or whether I'm actually just getting more... Height. Okay, so we have a little bit of an issue here. So let me show you. So here's the the new one, which has a, a lot more travel. But if I put this one where it goes, um you can see there's actually a lot more clearance, just not as much travel. What I really would have liked would be for me to get more clearance here, but I'm actually getting less clearance. So when I put one of my pieces in, I guess this is my maximum clearance, but I but I get to be able to sort of, okay, so so let me just measure this. So I'm getting 
little bit over one and three quarter inches clearance. Yeah, it's fairly arbitrary, a little bit under 50 mil. So yeah, so less, less than two inches clearance, um, but a lot more travel. Which to be honest, I'm not sure how, that, how much this is actually gonna help me. Uh, let me make one of my pieces and just have a quick look. So yeah, so I've actually got less space over the piece, but a, a lot more travel up and down. But again, I'm actually, I don't think I'm really getting the benefit of this because what I really want is, is this to be sort of much higher up so that I've just got more space. So yeah, so ultimately, well, obviously I'll get it all set up and show you it running, hopefully it runs. Um, but I think for what I'm trying to do, this is, is not ideal because it's just not giving me the clearance underneath. I mean, at least now I have a very distinct clearance and I'm not going to get the issue I got where when it was going up to a safe height, it was, it was actually bottoming out. So I think actually I'm going to be able to do a lot a lot better, a lot deeper um, work inside of my piece, but the piece has to be under two inches deep, which isn't that big a deal. Typically, I'm not working on stuff much more than that, but um, you know, just be, be aware that you're not gonna have the initial clearance, you're just gonna have a lot more travel from the piece. So, okay, I am going to um, take this over to where it lives um, and put, um, Plug it in and we will see if it works. Okay, fingers crossed, because we're gonna do this in real time. Um, this, is, this is a fairly thick piece that I would work on and it does fit under there, but again, I think that's gonna be uh, one of the concerns. Um, but they, they would also work. So as I say, we'll do this in real time and see if it works. Um, I'm not sure if I can turn the spindle on and off from here, but let's see if... So it is not controlling the stepper motor. All right, let me look at it. We'll come back. Okay, so no matter what I tried, I, I couldn't get it to control the stepper motor. I did some research online, talked to some people on Facebook, and what was suggested was that the that the the pinouts are different on uh, this stepper motor than the the original one. So I actually went through all sorts of convoluted processes, um, including pinning together all sorts of things, and I, I actually did manage to map out the the pinouts on both of these. If you need to know how, I, I can leave me a comment and maybe I'll just do a video explaining that if I can remember. Uh, got it working and, and then discovered that the thing I should have done was use the cable that they sent with the stepper motor and, and this unit. The, this cable has, has, two, of the, has uh, two of the cables, two of the pins swapped over. So I got it all working and then I discovered that if I had just used the cable that came with it, it would have worked in the first place. So, so kudos to the people who, uh, who I got this from. Um, so it does work, just don't use the cable that comes with your original stepper motor. Use the new cable and you should be good. And if you don't believe me, um, we'll go left and right, up and down. Oh, sorry, back and forth. Um, and the camera's attached <laughs> to the base, that's why you moved. Now this is this is backwards. So if I press um, down, it's going up. Um, but I'm pretty sure I can compensate for that um, in, uh, in in the G-code sender 
uh, probably, possibly even in the G code. It is very smooth, so I'm gonna stop talking for a second. So feel, it sounds very smooth. It's definitely much more solid. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna load something up and actually um, carve something just so we can see it working. Um, but uh, overall, a pretty good success. I think this whole thing, the whole thing, including shipping and everything, I'll, I'll get the exact price and put it down in the comments, around about $100, which isn't very much, except I only paid $140 for the, for the whole CNC. So from that perspective, it is. But anyway, let me get this uh, plugged in. I'll get something running and um, we'll finish with, with actually watching it, doing some carving, see if we can see what the flexing is like. Um, alrighty.